Hey guys, Abby Johnson here from Matterhorn Business Development. I am so excited because today I have my friend and fellow Hoosier, Natalie Nagengast from Markets for Makers on. And I am proclaiming Natalie the queen of pivot because she has already had to overcome some major changes in her company in the past, but now with the pandemic has had to pivot more than ever and I want you to hear from her on what she's doing. Now, we have talked to Natalie in the past. There's an interview with her and Neil that I will link up below, up above and down below. Um, so you can hear her full story. Um, it's a two-part interview. And I think there's a lot of lessons that you can learn there. Um, so welcome, Natalie. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So for those of you who don't, for the people out there that don't know you or haven't seen the past interview, why don't you tell us a little bit about Markets for Makers and what your company looked like before the pandemic? Yeah, it's <laughs> so crazy. Okay, so um, yeah, so I run, I kind of consider them to be like an Etsy trade show is the easiest way that I can explain it. It's, uh, we normally will, we rent out a big venue and we usually do it indoors and there's a huge crowd and it's so wonderful, which is like the opposite of what you want during a pandemic. And, um, yeah. And so we have been, um, we, we got hit really hard by this. That's for sure. And so we had had such an amazing beginning of our year. We actually had one of our highest ever Februaries. We had doubled our attendance. We were like, coming into 2020 like a human like a train and then coming in hot a train yeah it was like a train wreck so um so it's been crazy because it has put us in a position that we had never planned on we had never in a million years expected this to happen it was funny because i was like okay so because we had our february markets and then this started happening mid March. And we had an event in Chicago. Our next one was Chicago, April six, seven, somewhere a second weekend of April. And so, um, so yeah, so we were like looking at it, we're like, okay, so we're going to, we were just thinking of lots of solutions. We were like, okay, we're going to, we're going to clean all the railings. We're going to have a person cleaning the whole time. We'll disinfect everything. Our team will wear masks and gloves. I mean, we just, we had, we could fumigate the whole place after every time. So we, there's no germs on surfaces. Like there's all these different ways to like keep a space clean. And so we were like all planning for this. And then, um, I think it all started for us when we saw like the NBA was canceled. We were like, I don't know. When was, when was it for you? And when were you like, yeah. oh, this is like getting real. Like I think it was well, either the NBA yeah. or the, the borders were closed. Yeah, I think sports, I was kind of like, oh, whatever. Yeah. There, I definitely was in kind of maybe an ignorant mindset myself where I was like, oh, people are just overreacting. Like, yeah. We all of that us, oh, it's not gonna be a big deal we'll be yeah. fine you know like especially because in february it was funny because i had heard about covid so i was like and we were in miami and we were in jacksonville jacksonville's not as as international as miami is but there's a lot of people coming in and out of miami from all oh, yeah. so i literally I, like i put so many purell bottles everywhere i like i literally washed my hands so many times like people wanted to shake my hand and i was like you know i was already at that point where i was like oh i was like i don't really want to shake your hand but i don't want to be like mean about it but, but i would i would like were, that you were cautious because that is oh, a scenario in a big was, international city i mean how many people go through your markets three to five thousand and so oh my like, gosh that's yeah, a yeah. lot <laughs> we had we had a big crowd this time so i was like i literally was like taking so many breaks to wash my hands it wasn't like i already had this kind of consciously in my mind so i was like okay yeah chicago we're gonna be able to do it well then we got you know then they closed chicago and then they cl- like they, basically what happened was we were trying to figure out like okay what's our plan what are we going to do? So we were like, okay, let's look at July markets. We found out the venue we were in was opening a whole new section of the venue. So we were so lucky because this venue books out like two years in advance. And so talked to the girl. She's like, oh yeah, we have the North side of the venue. We just got rid of the tenant, which was like some antique seller. We got them out of there. And now we've got this whole new space. So it's like, okay, great. Let's, let's add July. At first I was thinking like, Add July. Now I'm like, we were like, okay, we're gonna have to cancel April and switch to July. Mm-hmm. I was really hoping to have both. And so we um basically we 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 had to secure new dates, which I mean at this point we don't I'm sure is a nightmare. Really, yeah, we don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, I hear yeah. stories about the fact that we won't be able to have public gatherings for a year or two years, and I go, oh my God. But but okay, so let's talk about my pivot. So <laughs> 
That's like the, the like, Hey, this really sucked. So that's the, <laughs> the crashing down. I'm sure yeah. it was a very emotional time because this is your yeah, baby. It was, it was really hard because like we had already taken in all of the money. Like we just sold the last booth that week. Mm-hmm. And here we have put, spent all the money on all of our payroll of like the past two months to organize the whole thing. We've spent all the money on the venue and we had like a tiny little set aside because most of the money we make is from attendance. So mm-hmm. like now we have people that are like, Oh, we need refunds. And we were like, we can't, like, we can't, we have it in our policy, but we were able to secure the July dates. So we're like, okay, let's push that off. We'll figure something out. Like that's one of the hardest parts for me as a struggle for this whole thing has been like, some people have wanted refunds and we, we, financially cannot afford to just shell out $40,000. Like yeah. it's actually impossible. There's no $40,000. Like we'd already spent all the money. So now we're like, we're so sorry. Like, you know, like we don't know what else yeah. to say. I mean, it's like, we didn't have planned, like nobody had planned for this. Like if we could yeah, have of any event, we would have done it. And so, so anyway, so yeah. So it's funny because this whole situation, I have felt a little bit better because I'm not the only one versus like when I, a little backstory, if you haven't watched the other video, but the little backstory is that I had another market and it grew so big. And then the city put it out for an RFP and for a bid. And then they sold my whole company. And I felt very singled out. I felt very much like punished for doing like a really good thing for the city. Like I felt really sad. I hate to say it. Cause I like, don't want to give them that glory of like, like, Oh, we made her sad. Like they're, I think they were trying to make me sad. I don't know. But, like it made me feel really sad. Cause I was like, I really did this beautiful thing to help a whole community. And I felt like, like they were coming after trying to take over my whole company and they didn't, they thought that they could do it. Like I wasn't the source of all this goodness. They thought the reason why that market was successful is because they gave me a little bit of money. And like, for me, I was like, no, that wasn't the only reason. <laughs> they obviously me. don't know Natalie. because They don't know my hustle. And the fact that like when that had closed down, I lost $60,000. Like I had invested my whole savings plus more taken on debt. Like I had put a lot more, I had taken like maybe 25% from the city and I had I mean, it was just like so sad, but like this situation, and especially after living through that, I was like, I can literally, like, I don't know, to me, I'm like, I can literally make anything happen at this point. And we came off of such this high, like we were on this steep, like amazing trend in their company. And then to just like stop, it's like, okay, well, at least I'm not the only one. That's the best part about this. I I honestly haven't had a few moments where I'm like, am I going to be able to come back? Like, what's going to happen? Like I've had those few short moments, but I've never like gotten, I've never cried about it. I've never been um, super upset about it. I've never been like my whole company is going under. I've never had that mentality because I know that I'm a part of an entire economy and world that's going through the same exact thing. And that at this point, the government is kind of being forced their hand. If they're going to make it illegal for us to do business, they're going to have to figure out a way to pay us to keep our doors open. So we were really lucky to get in early on the payroll protection program. So that kind of, yeah, we have a small business loan, which will give us a couple thousand. I mean, it's not a lot, but it's funny. It's like when you're in a business, like I saw something that um, our town was going to be giving out $2,500 grants. And I'm like, most businesses, like at least for me, it's like at least ten thousand dollars keep my doors open every month. So like mm-hmm. that's like a drop in the bucket. It's true. Yeah. But if we have to cancel both April and July, we're looking at over a hundred thousand in profit we would have used to pay off all of our debt. And I the goal was to get solvent and like be fully paid off of all of debt by the end the, by the summer. So yeah. that's definitely pushed off till another day. But um, luckily for me, I have I've been talking about this for literally years. I have always, I'm always planning like more things. I always try to get more income sources. So even with my markets, I have three income sources. Um, I've got the vendors, booth fees. I've got the attendees buying tickets. And then the third one that we've been working on is sponsorships. And that's the kind of weaker of the leg, but we really want to get that bigger. So I had these three sources. Yeah. I had these three sources of income and I was like, okay, good. That's good. Now we need to take those three sources of income, we need to make more sources of income right before this whole thing happened. So I had actually scheduled our entire year to have July markets, then we'd have an April market, then we would have a break between April and July, which would be, you know, April, May, June, and halfway through July. So it's like three months off to like, like get some time in to help us with all of these, like these goals that we had for the year. Well, with April canceled, 
it was like, okay, now we have to do or die. We have to do these things that I had been planning on already, or we're not going to have any income. Cause that was the hardest part was I was like, oh, well, I had expected to have income while trying to build up these other areas. <laughs> so it's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So, um, so anyways, we went full steam ahead. And I think the most frustrating thing for me personally has been, the, the, like the lag between like getting it started and when we know we're going to get some money in the door. Yeah. And cause but, obviously you want yeah. it to be right away and you need it yeah. to be right away, Yes, but you also have to put it there. And there's a lot of yeah. work that goes into what you're doing. And, but More than I, had ho- like, I had really hoped it'd be like an overnight. I was like, even now I, I'm doing tasks. I'm like, Oh yeah, I'll get this done in an hour. And then like three hours later, I've gotten it. Done. Like, I'm just like, it takes yeah. time to create quality products. Like yeah. it's one thing if you just like create something really haphazardly and you just kind of throw it like, and that's fine. But like for me, I needed it to have a certain level of quality before I launched it. Well, it's your brand and you yeah. have, um, your brand is very polished and yeah. what I've seen so far is very polished. You, it doesn't look like it's been thrown together. Well, and you know, one thing it was funny because I was writing an article today about branding and I was like, okay, but what is branding? Branding is your color scheme, your fonts, your logos, but beyond a brand, it's your communication of who you are as a company. So it actually could go just as far as like, what does that person expect when they walk in the door? What kind of reputation do you have? What kind of like, what is that consistent feeling that somebody has? Like, it's like, what's your personality basically? And so we're trying to figure out like, okay, well, we've always had this like certain level of quality we need to make sure that we continue the level of quality. So, so yeah, so we had started off, um, let's see, day one. I mean, it was just so crazy because we kind of went through these like up and downs, but like, let's have this idea. Let's have that idea. Um, and, uh, one of them was like, okay, well, first off, what can we do to make money right away? That was the first thing we need to figure out. Okay. So we're at ground zero. We got all these different followers. We got all these different things. What can we do to bring money in the door? So the first thing we did was we figured out that we could, um, create a printful website where it's printing on demand apparel. So like, okay, well what's on brand. And so we started creating, we spent like a week and a half creating a bunch of brand, like stuff that we could put on t-shirts that are on demand printing. Um, little did I know at the time that some of these printing was going to, the printing was going to take like three to four weeks. Like we still, oh, no. have I know that was a hard part. So I haven't like you, you kind of, sometimes you take two steps forward and you take one step back and you're like, well, at least people are forgiving right now. And they understand. That. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. People understand that this is a weird time. It's such and a weird time. If, yeah. if everyone can't get it there in two days, neither can we like, you know, like, right. That's when I knew this was serious. Was when, yeah, when you could get Amazon delivery. Yeah. I was like, wait, this I think I ordered something and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get it in the middle of April. It'd been like a month out. Yeah. It was like, it gave me like a three or four week shipping time. And I was like, the apocalypse is happening. And then like all the delivery services started shutting down. Like it was just crazy. So, okay. So we knew we needed to get that up and going. So that was the first thing. So we got it up and launched and I definitely like turned to all my friends and family on that. I was surprised personally, and I'm just going to say it. I did not get as many sales from the people that don't know me on my website, which is always to me a good indicator if the product is a good product or like a good indicator of how the economy is going. I didn't personally expect a whole lot because it just, it's hard for me to promote um, something. Yeah. It has like t-shirts and stuff, but like, we've always, our mission statement is to help other businesses. So it's hard for me to be like, just help my business. You know what I mean? Like it's hard for me to promote yeah. that. And so I was like, okay, good. Well, we got that going. So at least we have that on the side and we are making sales. It's not like we aren't making any sales. And it's funny is it's picked up some days and we ordered like a bunch of samples. And that was the hardest part was you order a bunch of samples. And then it's like, I think it's getting here to tomorrow or the next day. And I ordered it like four weeks ago, oh like my just my gosh. samples to take photos of, to be able to get the content out there, which was taking weeks. And so anyway, so, okay. So I got the, that up and going, then I was like, okay, well, we need to figure out how to sell our, our makers products on our websites. So we thought, okay, well, let's just list all of the products. And they're like, well, then we're going to have to forward an email. Like, it's so complicated. We've got sales tax. It's just like, it kind of is like opening up a can of worms. If you're going to do it for five businesses, you might as well set it up for like 50. You know, like the amount of hurdles that you're going to go through are just going to be like. You're, you're essentially like, building your own Etsy. 
Really? Exactly. So that's <laughs> where, that's where some friends came in. So I had a friend of mine, he's awesome. And he basically has been building me a platform that is Etsy. It's a multi-vendor platform where each vendor can log in on their own like portal and then they can upload all of their products and then we'll take a cut and then we will promote their products, which we're trying to figure out how that's going to work exactly. But one cool thing about Etsy, good thing for us, not cool about them, but if you've been on Etsy anytime recently, it is so inundated with place things from China, from all over. Mm-hmm. Like people have so many knockoff stuff on Etsy at this point. Mm-hmm. If you've gone on there recently, the quality, it's so hard to find something that's really good these days. It's not very Yeah, curious. I've noticed that it's like not really handmade goods anymore. It's mm-hmm. like almost turning eBay. And then yeah. to find the quality makers, it is really hard to to look at. Yeah. Wait, is this handmade or is this exactly. special? Did they get this on Amazon? What's right. happening? Even the U.S. based companies are buying stuff from from China. It's like one of the things that we come up with. Like, it's so yeah, I as a as an organizer of a market, I can tell when someone's jewelry came from China or another location because it's the same stuff. Like, yeah. it's always <laughs> the same exact stuff, and they've got the same group of. It's like mm-hmm. it's like looking at a carbon copy. So it's just been really interesting. So anyway, so I. I, um, so we're building that, that we started a month ago. It's still, I'm hoping I was always like this week is going to happen. We're kind of like testing things right now. We're finding all the glitches now. Next week we'll launch it. I'm hoping by May, like I hope by middle of April, but these things they take time. So I was like, okay, we've got that rolling and my friend, he's building it. And I, I trust him to do all that. And he's really awesome. So then I start to look at what else can I control myself? What can I do to continue to build up my company. So we've got our social media division. So I've got my social media girl. She's been continuing to promote the apparel and we have been selling apparel. Um, so that is continuing. We got, I had to, um, one of the big things I had to do the first day was I organized all my finances. I went through and I was like, okay, so where are we? Update the QuickBooks. I got all my taxes together and got all that together. I was like, okay, what is our, how much do we need every single month to keep our doors open? I mean, I just really dove deep that first week while everybody else was like trying to sell things and do other stuff. I was just trying to get myself back to base one. What are the, I, I deferred payments on cards. I've, um, gotten to the point where let's see what else did I do. I'm trying to think, um, deferred payments. Uh, I just tried to look at what do we really need? Like, what do we need and what don't we need? Does that make sense? So I like, totally. I went in, yeah, I went in and I, I canceled things. Yeah. Like yeah. you just, you want to be so controlling over your money because every single cent that's going out the door is like, you know, and, um, I ended up putting a little bit of money into the stock market, but this week I was just like, I'm out. I can't, I can't do it anymore. It went up and I made a few thousand and I was like, okay, we made a few thousand. I'm good. But I, at a certain point I was like, I can't because there's like, it went up and it just kind of been steadily kind of up and down in this one range. And I was like, it's uh, until doors open. Yeah, no, not unless you can throw away the money. Like to me, the stock market, especially in a moment like this, it's like going into the casino. You only, my dad always says only bet with money. You would literally throw in the trash can. You know what I mean? Oh, like, that's, a good, that's good advice. Oh, yeah. Like literally if you're willing to tear up the 20 and like throw it in the trash can, then you can bet it. But if you're not willing to literally tear it up and light it on fire, then do not bet that money because, because most likely you're going to lose it. Odds are against you. So, so yeah, so we have that going. And then, um, then we, we basically were like, okay, how do we monetize what we already have? I see a lot of businesses they are going out there in other markets. They're showing off, like they're not showing off, but like they're creating a lot of great content and they're creating all these free videos and all these great things. It's so wonderful. And they're helping them out. That's awesome. But they're not monetizing anything. And that was something I even talked to a friend of mine about. I was like, okay, it's great that you're going to create a YouTube channel. You're going to create all these different things, but you've got to figure out how to monetize it. Even if you're going to create a free video channel, you're probably going to want to try to get clients off of that video channel that are then later paid. You know, so basically we kind of 
we kind of decided, okay, well, what are, what are our assets? Well, we've got a lot of people that follow us. So that's, that's going to be the apparel and the makers online marketplace, which is being built. And then we have a ton of makers that need help right now. So that's where we came up with the makers community. And that's what I've been working on for the past two weeks. That's why I've been writing so many different blogs. I have a little list right here. So far I've written 44 blogs in the past. Oh my like, gosh. Just, and I, yeah, go ahead. I saw your little preview on Instagram of yes. it, and yes. it's so great. Oh, There's good. so I'm much so valuable good. information, all the basics that that artists especially don't think yeah. about. Makers want to make. Yeah, <laughs> well, make. it's so <laughs> true because so many people ask me like, oh, what do I do with this? What do I do with that? What do I do with this? And it's like, I have been asked so many questions and I've done different, I've been wanting to make this community for so long. So like the first last week, like at the beginning of the week, we're like, okay, let's get started in the makers community. Okay, let's go find a platform. So I looked at like 15 different platforms and then I like, was like, okay, good. I found a platform. I signed up for the platform. Then I started like figuring out, cause I had already like back in, 2017 written out a 25 page document about all kinds of things I wanted to teach people in the makers community. Like literally when I lost my business in my city, I had proposed in the RFP and the the bid process that I wanted to create this community. And so it was like this thing that I really wanted to do. So I had all these documents. I had all these blog posts. I've been doing research for years and it's literally been this passion project that I finally get to launch. So Thursday, I wrote 6,000 words in the day. Friday, I wrote 6,000 words in the day. I was like, Saturday, I was like, I can't look at a computer anymore. I made pickles all day and baked pies. Like, it was just like... (laughs) Sunday I was burnt out and Monday I was burnt. I like there's it's hard to keep your burnt to be like. Yeah, that's intense. Yeah. Yeah. So then I got back into it yesterday. I got back into it today. We got through I got through another 20 articles today so far. And some of it is like, hey, how do we build this? Okay, good. Let's go find the video for it. And like, but it takes a lot of hours to research things yourself. So the whole idea is it'll be like this platform, $10 a month. And then I had shot the first week and week that we closed our, our, uh, doors for the markets. I was shooting a video with a good friend of ours and I created a course so that'll be for sale on the platform for additional. So we're just like trying to figure out like, how can we make money, but also create such a huge value almost as a crowdfunding. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say is it's still very much the purpose of your company and exactly. aligns with your purpose at Matterhorn. We talk a lot about that. And exactly. it's the first thing we do with every client is establish the basic purpose. And exactly. if you're doing something that doesn't align with your basic purpose, you need to get rid of it. It's actually one of my first articles that I had, like the business basics, like figure out what your purpose is because so many times you're going to get all these different things coming in and you're going to be like, okay, what are we, you know, what's going to, what can we do? Like, oh, this person really wants me to make this or that. And you kind of can go off down the, another road. But at the totally. end of the day, like you just have to figure out what is it that you do? Because because yes, I'm inspiring different companies and I'm helping different companies. It's not that my apparel line doesn't go along with that, but it didn't mean I wanted to create like a wash your hands t-shirt or something that had to do with face right. or anything like that. Now I wanted my makers to make those things along their purposes. And then I get to help them sell that product and hopefully I can make some money at the same time. So right. that's been one of the things that we have been is that we try to look at like, okay, what do we do? What, do, what can we do within our own purpose? I honestly was thinking about like making, I got all these supplies to make, um, uh, hand sanitizer at the very beginning. And then I was like, guys, we're going to become like a product company. Are we sure we want to do this? And everyone's like, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> we're not a product company, but I was even thinking, cause we couldn't find any Purell. I mean, I was like, right. We're going to host these events. We need to have Purell at every single station. We keep up the ready clean. We'll have lots of soap. Like that was my plan. But, uh, yeah. So, but in terms of like a long term solution, that's not really like the purpose of your company is to sanitize people's hands. (laughs) Exactly. And it's fine if I want to like create my own little company on the side, but that's not what we do as a company, you know? So it's like, okay. So, yeah. And then, so one of the things that I also kind of remind myself, um, I go back and forth. Uh, you know, there's like the half of you is like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna have this much time. And I want to be really, really motivated. And there's certain days where you're like, I can't be any more motivated. I can take a walk. Like that's one thing, like I get outside as much as I can. I'm like, let's get outside. Like I, I take the moments in which I'm super productive and, and like roll with it. And then when I like slow down, I like slow down, but I've always been that kind of personality. Like I'm going to be going 
50 miles an hour and there's gonna be a certain point where I burn out and I'm not going to continue to push myself at that point. I'm going to get a lot more sleep, a lot better for nutrition, a lot more vitamins, rest, watch a season of something on Netflix. Like, you know, and it's yeah. funny, I can still never like fully stop. Like even when I'm watching TV, I'm always on my computer, or my phone doing something. <laughs> I don't know if you're like the same way, but I can't, I am so bad. I mean, um, yeah, whenever I'm, I'm always asking the person that I'm with watching it, like, what just happened? Wait, what did I, you know, they get, <laughs> wait, what did I miss? I was on Instagram. Like, why, why are you laughing? Like, what did they do? <laughs> yeah. Wait, can we rewind it for a second? <laughs> so. But I think it is important to do it. You said like, when you, when you feel yourself like reaching that breaking point, yeah. to, to, it's okay to rest and it's yeah. okay to take a night off and watch three movies in a row. If that's yeah, what it. you need to do to recharge. Yeah. And one other big thing that I started to do was I started to take more walks. I tried yes, to, same. um, yeah, I try to take more walks. I try to look at the positive news. I also try to find the news that is very statistical versus like feelings and what everybody feels about it. Like, Oh, blah, blah, blah happened today. Now this person's upset. Like, I don't want to read that. I don't care about that. And I don't want to read, Oh, somebody that's your age just died randomly of this thing. Right. Like, I want to know what are the statistics overall? Like what, how are we doing overall? Like what are the numbers behind it? But also what are all the good things happening? Um, trying not to go down that rabbit hole of like, this is doom and despair. That's really important. Totally. Yeah. There's a lot of good news networks that I already was following, but now especially um, there's them on Instagram. There's even an Instagram account called coronavirus good news. And they only post like this many people were cured today or things like that. Exactly. 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 And so I try to go down that route. The other thing that I remind myself, that's the other thing I was trying to make sure I make told you was that, that in uh, recessions, the most millionaires are made. And I've heard that many, many times. And wow, reason, I haven't heard that. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, because so many people, if they have any assets, they have money, they usually invest it in real estate or like once the, the economy has gone down, if you invest your money and your time in the right places, there's less competition all of the sheep die off and the wolves stay, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and it's one of those things where we want to come out of this as strong as we possibly can helping the people as much as we can. And it's, it's funny because I've heard, you know, Oh, definitely promote, 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 promote. And that's awesome. And I want to do that, but it's also like, we had to pivot first to Mm -hmm. get that done. And then we're going to like really turn on because like, I can't promote my markets right now. Like there's nothing to promote. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where you go like, uh, you know, like there's certain things you got to see if it's going to work for your company. So Mm -hmm. there've been certain makers where I'm like, okay, well, um, I talked to them. I love to talk to my makers and they message me. Um, one girl, she's like, Oh yeah. I noticed she was liking my photos and liking what I had to say about the makers community. And I looked at her stuff. She's, yeah. Well, I, I just started my company, but it looks like it was not going to get off the ground. I looked at it and she had this like mobile, um, coffee bar that you can take to like events and festivals and like all that stuff. And I said, well, why don't you like go to all of the grocery stores and all of the home home improvement stores that are still open and go to the, the managers and say, can I please park my, my truck in your drive, like in your parking lot, you know, and, and follow all the rules and do everything you need to do. But I said, start getting out there and hustling. Like that's something my mom would have told me, just like go knock on a bunch of doors. Yeah. You might have 40 people that say no, but if you find a spot that you get to sh- pop up with coffee, like, I don't know if you, Abby, if you've gone to Starbucks recently, <laughs> I did it. Yes. Monday, Tuesday, I went to Starbucks cause I was going to get a tire changed. And so I went into Starbucks. I was like, I'm going to do it. I've got some time. The line was like 25 cars long. I get oh my the line. It took me 45 minutes to get coffee. Yeah. Coffee is life for people. I'm not a coffee drinker, but it's like yeah, but- the real deal for people. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, they couldn't even put out like a table out front where you can like socially distantly put something outside. Yeah. I was like, I blows my mind. I mean, 
So I was like, yeah. okay. And I've seen other, other companies, like I'll drive by and their, their front door is open of their restaurant and they just put a table in front of it and they'll just yeah. be right there. I was like, that's pretty great. Yeah. Um, some people are doing delivery. Uh, that's really great. There's different apps you can put into your website to schedule deliveries. Like my favorite bakery in town, they're doing deliveries. Mm-hmm. Um, and that means I actually get there more often because so many times I go there and they're only open like Thursday to Sunday and certain oh, till 2 PM. And I always remember it like 2 30. Yeah, always. (laughs) It's nice. Like people are pivoting, and I I think you have to pivot. You have to be online. Um, I also think that it it it's funny because at my markets, people decide if they have done well at my markets, depending on how much money they made. And I hate it because I tell them it's not about the money. It is about how many contacts you made at that market. How many people did you get to sign up for email account? Email. um, what is it? MailChimp, you know, or whatever Mm -hmm. your email provider is. Mm -hmm. How many people did you get on your texting platform? How many people did you get to follow you on your Instagram? Like, and now all those people are like, Oh, I'm not even following me and nobody's buying my stuff. I'm like, well, if you had gotten, if you had incentivized people to follow your Instagram, then you would be in a lot better position to have your people continue to buy from you. Cause people don't always, they're so obsessed with the, the, in the now sale and they're not thinking about the sales in the future. Yeah. I, every one of your makers should be doing a raffle. That's what we do at conventions. We have a raffle and we gather, you know, like a hundred identities. And now we've just gotten a hundred leads and a hundred people. Oh, yeah. want I even like, um, one of my girls, she sells plants and she's always giving away these little baby air plants. They're super cheap for her to buy. So I'm always telling her like, why don't you get people to like you on Instagram to be able to get an air plant? Like, you know, if you're, when they're purchasing, yeah. you know, like us on Instagram to get an extra little baby air plant when you're purchasing something, you know, so like little freebies, chapsticks, anything like, I, it doesn't matter like that 10 cents, 20 cents for that chapstick bottle you could then hopefully sell that person for many years to come. And if you get lots of followers, you do have to pay for your content to get in front of them, but it's much cheaper to get a person to buy again than it will be to get somebody that's brand new. Right. So I think that the important message here, which is what I'm trying to get out to everyone is that you can do something about it. Even, even if you are shut down right now, you can be doing something. Yeah. It, it is possible. You might think it's not possible, but it is. Um, I'm working with a group of barbers right now. They obviously can't cut hair, but they are still in communication with their customers. They're learning. They're getting better. Um, there's things that everyone can be doing. So instead yeah. of like, I'm trying to get everyone out of the defeated mindset of just like, well, we're shut down and you know, that's it. And like you of all people could have yeah. easily just said, well, I can't have a market. So my, my company is gone. And yeah, I've talked to different markets that are just like closing doors right now. Um, biggest thing I can tell you that I would do if I was a barber or I was anyone that is in something that literally can't go to work is, um, trying to find something that you can produce that is very much needed and wanted right now. And I will tell you the biggest product that is needed right now is masks. So even if you like getting a sewing machine or finding a sewing machine, learning that skill, I don't think, I mean, I took home ec and and made a pillow when I was in sixth grade. I'm not exactly, it's not exactly easy for me, but there's so many more resources now and so many more YouTube videos. And there's even ways where you can just buy bandanas and like get the... And hold them. Yeah. Yeah. Roll them. And the, and I mean, there's just so many things that you can be doing to be hustling and selling a $5 face mask or doing anything to create something that's going to bring value to people and selling them on the corner, selling them anywhere because people can't get a hold of face masks. They can't get a hold of, um, of Purell and, and other types of sanitizers, um, you know, selling soaps, I do not think that you should be selling anything based off of fear, like, like going and hoarding a bunch of toilet paper and trying to sell it to people and, and Purell, but trying to create a business that brings value and is on the same price point and, and is definitely, you know, like worth what you should and trying to 
you know, I, I was even thinking about it. It's like shipped needs so many people to be delivering right now. Totally. And if yeah. you're young and you're willing to put yourself in harm's way, I mean, I don't really feel like if you're wearing gloves and you're wearing masks and you're washing your hands and you're sanitizing a lot, I really don't think that you need to be as fearful of this than, than they're making it out to be. So I think that if you're willing to look at that side, then, um, yes, uh, shipped is a really great service to get into any delivery service right now, Mm -hmm. talking to different restaurants or anything that's still open to see what they need and want. Um, Amazon's probably hiring a million people. I mean, just like the economy shifts. And there's a bunch of essential jobs that still need to be done. And if you're willing to do those essential jobs and you're willing to shift with the economy, you're not going to do badly. Totally. Well, thank you so much, Natalie, for being on here. Where can people find you and your many ventures that you have going? Yeah. I mean, I would just say if you guys want to be a part of the community, it's the makerscommunity.com. So that's my biggest, my biggest project going on the markets. It's, you know, marketsformakers.com. If you want to apply to a market, uh, we will definitely try to have it. Otherwise we are giving people, if they don't get in, um, a credit towards a future application to another market, whenever we do get up and going. So uh, I would hope that anyone would want to not only be a part of our community, but contribute to the community if they have something of value to bring to it. So. Awesome. So go out Natalie go check out markets for makers and the makers community check them out on Instagram and of course don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you are not subscribed already see you next time great thanks